Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and I'm gonna show you how to make oven fried chicken wings, extra crispy style. So, got a couple pound of chicken wings here. Um, these are air chilled wings, which are great. Um, so what, chicken, after it's uh, processed, that is, you know, killed and cut into pieces, um, the feathers are then removed, uh, and then the chicken has to be chilled down below 40 degrees relatively fast, and there's a couple ways to do this. Either they take the chicken and um, dunk it into a very cold bath, which goes quickly and it's cheap and easy, um, or they put it in a blast chiller, which is more expensive, um, not quite as cheap and easy, and then ends up leading to slightly more expensive chicken. But the good thing about air chilled chicken versus water chilled chicken is that air chilled chicken has a lot less retained moisture, um, and the skin is already a little bit drier, which makes this faster. You can do this with water chilled chicken too. It just, um, I'll, I'll show you where, where the steps change when you do that. So I've got a, about, two and a half pounds of chicken wings there. You can do this with any amount of chicken. Um, the important part is just the ratio of the ingredients. So, I've got two and a half pounds of chicken wings in a bowl, and now I'm gonna get some kosher salt as well. Baking powder and a little cornstarch. So for every pound of chicken, we're going to be adding one teaspoon of each of these. Okay, so kosher salt. One, two, and a half. Baking powder. One, two, and a half. And kosher, and uh, sorry, cornstarch. If you've read my recipe for this on Series Eats, um, or the recipe it was based off of, um, which I did for Cook's Illustrated on roasted chicken, um, it didn't have cornstarch in it, but I've since started adding it because it adds a little bit to the crispness. So, these um, baking powder wings, um, you might have seen this technique of adding baking powder to poultry before. Um, I know now that like even Alton Brown has done a video on it, Chef John has done a video on it. Um, this is a technique I originally developed for Cooks Illustrated in uh, 2007, uh, 2007, something like that, for a roast chicken recipe. Um, in that recipe, it's pretty complicated. What you do is like you break the chicken into parts, you cut a few slits for fat drainage, and then you poke a whole bunch of holes in the fat deposits on the chicken thighs and breasts um, in order to help them render, and then you coat them in a mixture of salt and baking powder, and you let them rest overnight in the fridge uncovered before roasting them, and it leads to super duper crispy uh, chicken. Now, the way it works, there's a couple me mechanisms by which it works. The main one is that baking powder, um, as we know, when it gets moist, it forms little bubbles uh, of, of gas. And in this case, those bubbles form inside um, a membrane of, you know, moisture from the chicken breast that's sort of bound, that has uh, quite a bit of the protein from the, um, the chicken skin in it. And so as the chicken then subsequently cooks, it forms these like teeny, teeny, tiny micro blisters that give the surface give them much more surface area. Um, the other thing is that baking powder is mildly alkaline, um, and the mild alkalinity helps the protein in the chicken break down more. Uh, so you get shorter protein strands um, and crispier texture in the skin. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to take these wings, toss them really thoroughly. They have a nice coating on them. I'm going to arrange them skin side up on this baking sheet. Spaced evenly apart. So now, I'm gonna bake these on the same day. This Right now it's around 9 a.m. and I'm probably gonna bake these for lunch, so around noon. If I were using water chilled chicken wings, um, and, unless you're, and unless your package says specifically air chilled, it is almost certainly going to be water chilled chicken. Um, if I was using water chilled wings, I would probably do this the day before and bake them the next day, as opposed to trying to do them all at once on the same day, because you want some of that excess moisture uh, to really evaporate off. Um, the other thing you could do is point a fan at it and let the fan um, get rid of some of that excess moisture. Anyhow, these are going to go into the fridge 
I cleared a space out for this whole tray here at the bottom. You do want to store raw poultry at the bottom so that, and I'll take these raw things out so that it doesn't, um, so that you don't accidentally drip any poultry juices onto things below. Um, so that's going to go in there. And I will now come back in about three hours and show you where we're at. I have preheated the oven to 450 degrees, rack in the center, upper center, um, and here are the chicken wings. So they could be a little bit drier, but you can see what's starting to go on here. You can see they have that sort of very faint coating on them, and you can even see the little bubbles that are starting to form. Um, those are the sort of micro blisters, I call them, that are going to um, give surface area and crunch to these. Um, I, you know, my recipe on Serious Heat says to, to wait a minimum of eight hours and go up to 24. It's only been three hours, but I'm not gonna stand. I'm not gonna let five hours stand in the way of some chicken wings. I'm pretty sure they're gonna work anyway. All right, so they're gonna go into the oven for about 20 minutes at 450 degrees, convection on if you've got it. Um, and meanwhile, I'm gonna make some ranch dressing. So no normally I would do blue cheese, but um, I don't have any blue cheese at home right now and none of the shops nearby me carry it. So I'm gonna make some ranch. Um, this one's a little bit more traditional than the yogurt ranch I made last time. So we're doing a mixture of buttermilk, sour cream, and if you don't, if you don't, if, you know, if you don't have buttermilk around, you can just skip it. You can use sh just sour cream and mayo, and it'll come up fine. Thin it out with a little bit of regular milk if you want to, um, or some yogurt and mayo. So about equal parts of each. Okay. Then got me some garlic powder. Garlic powder is different from fresh garlic. They're, you know, it's not a replacement for fresh garlic. Um, it's also not necessarily bad. It's just a different flavor, similar with granulated onion. I'm sorry, that's granulated garlic, not garlic powder. I, I, I always call granulated garlic garlic powder for some reason. Same with granulated onion. So it's about a teaspoon of each. Um, I think I did about a half cup each of the, um, the sour cream, buttermilk, and uh, mayo. And, all right, now some fresh garlic. Let's say garlic press is totally fine for garlic. Doesn't hurt it. Two, two cloves, two big cloves in there. It's good. All right, those are those ingredients. Now I've got some fresh parsley. I'm gonna pull off some fresh dill here. These are sort of the, the classic ranch dressing ingredients. If you want it to really taste like store-bought stuff, um, use dried dill weed and dry parsley as opposed to fresh. Um, and then stick with just the granulated and the granulated onion and garlic. But I like the flavor of the fresh herbs and fresh garlic in this, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna use them. <clears throat> so, what do I talk about now? Oh, this, this is a porg. <laughs> my, my daughter was playing with him this morning. I thought it would be, um, it, it reminded me, well, I thought it'd be funny to have him sitting there. Um, well, as he was sitting there, I, I was thinking it's funny that he's sitting there watching me uh, cook some chicken wings and it reminds me of that scene uh, in The Last Jedi, which was a Star Wars film that I actually quite enjoyed. I did not particularly enjoy Rise of Skywalker. Although, you know, last Jedi, I actually had the opportunity to go to the world premiere um, in Hollywood. So part of my enjoyment might have just been the fact that um, I was there and it was like a big event and I was super excited to be there. Um, that said, I've still enjoyed it even after then. So who knows, maybe maybe I'm basking in the joy and the glow of my premiere access to that or maybe I just legitimately like the movie. All right, chop, 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 chop. Is it weird I talk about Star Wars on a episode about oven fried chicken wings? Some people are gonna say, I know some people are gonna say, oh, why are you calling these oven fried when they're not oven fried? Um, okay, fine, you can call them baked if you want, you can call them roasted if you want. The reason I call them oven fried is because language is meant for communication and I think when people hear fried oven fried chicken wings they they then can make the connection immediately and say oh okay these are meant to be like regular fried chicken wings but they're done in the oven so that's why i use the phrase oven fried because 
languages for communicating. All right, some lemon juice also. Hmm, seedless lemon, interesting. And a little dash of, this is Piedmont d'Espelette. You can use whatever kind of chili you like. If you're Chef John, you can use a pinch of cayenne. Salt, of course. And last two ingredients. Plenty of black pepper. That's the other sort of primary flavor in ranch dressing for me is black pepper. Sometimes people ask what's going on on my phone. This is just a monitor, so it's delayed by like three seconds. I've heard people say, oh, he's watching the recipe as he goes along. Um, I'm not watching someone else cook. I'm watching my own feed delayed by a couple seconds. Um, and then this is just some MSG to give it that real, that real ranch flavor. Let's see how we... Looks good to me. Let's see how it tastes. That is ranchy. All right. So this I'm going to set aside for a little bit. It's going to get better as it sits because that granulated garlic and onion is going to start rehydrating a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to make my chicken wing sauce. So wing sauce. You know, of course there's a million and one ways to do it, but classic buffalo wing sauce is Frank's Red Hot, specifically that brand, um, along with butter. Just melt it together, that's it. That said, you can always do a little bit more with it. Um, and today, I'm, I don't have any Frank's, um, they didn't have it at the store nearby, so I'm using Crystal, which is from a different place, but similar in flavor. Um, garlic and butter. So let's go about four tablespoons of butter. Let me refold this towel. Along with about four cloves. Garlic. We're just going to let that melt and sizzle a tiny bit on the stove top. We don't want to brown the garlic at all. We just kind of want to get its raw edge off and let its flavor kind of infuse a little bit into the butter. For that one, I'm going to use my tiny whisk. I don't know if this is the same. I don't know if it's the same size as the one uh, Andrew uses over on uh, binging with Babish. I know he's into his tiny whisk, right? But this is this whisk I've had had since my restaurant days. So I don't know, probably for 15, 20 years now. Um, I use it all the time in restaurants. It's really good for. Um, when you're when you're heating up, reheating single portions of soup for re-emulsifying it and making it making sure it's smooth, for when you're making pan sauces, um, a tiny whisk is useful. And anytime where you're you're going to frequently reach for and grab a whisk, but you want to be able to fit inside um, a bain marie, you know, like a a, um, a container of water where you keep all your spoons and various utensils that you use throughout the course of the night. Um, I leave a tiny whisk in there all the time because it comes in useful. Making butter sauces like this is really useful. Making little batches of bermonte or beurre blanc sauce, useful. All right, so basically by the time the butter is melted, you can smell it. You can smell when the garlic kind of shifts from being really raw smelling to being a little bit more smooth and mellow. Um, and of course, the longer you cook it, the sweeter it's gonna get and the more, um, well, the more of those brown flavors you're going to get, and I, and I don't really want brown garlic flavors in my uh, chicken wing sauce, so I'm not going to let it brown. So basically, once you start seeing bubbles like that, that's a sign that you're getting to around 212 degrees. Garlic cooks at 183 degrees, so if it's bubbling, you're probably good. All right, now we're just going in with about four tablespoons 
of hot sauce, which when you're working with a tiny bottle like this, it's gonna take a while. It's about a third of this bottle, but basically equal parts hot sauce and butter is what we're after. I think that's about right. And that is it. That is our That's our wing sauce. Franks and Crystal's um, hot sauce, they're made with um, um, cayenne peppers and they are um, aged and then uh, bottled with vinegar and salt. So it's a very sort of vinegary, vinegary hot sauce, which is what you want for wings because you need something to really cut through all that fatty richness of the rings, wings. Okay, so I'm gonna check my wings once. Yeah, it looks like we're starting to get brown and crispy already. You guys see that? You see that? So, tell you what, I'm gonna put these back in. I'm gonna cover this up and open it back up in 10 minutes. And, whew. all right, here's where we're at now. So you see how, oh my goodness, you see all these little micro blisters, all these puffy crispy bits? Ooh, it's already so crisp. It's still not quite done though we still gotta crisp up the other side and let just a little bit more fat render. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the wings over like this. So chicken skin is made up of a few things. It's mostly water, as you know, as most kind of tissue in the body is. It's mostly water, um, but it's also got quite a bit of fat and also quite a bit of collagen, um, connective tissue. So when you're trying to get crispy skin that's both crispy and tender, your goals are to A, first dehydrate it. You can't get crispy things when there's still water in them. Dehydrate it uh, and to render out quite a bit of that fat so that you don't have as much liquid fat in there. Um, and then also to break down the collagen uh, so that it's not tough, all right? So air drying over, air drying, um, you know, for even for a few hours and overnight and also giving it plenty of time in the oven that's uh, a good step towards dehydrating it. Um, rendering the fat is also something that just takes time. Um, as far as um, breaking down collagen goes, uh, you need both moisture and fat, uh, sorry, mo moisture and time and heat to do that. So that you can't break down collagen in tissue that is completely dry. Um, so if you've ever, for instance, tried letting your chicken or turkey rest Several days. Oh, sorry. So I flipped those over. Those are going to go back in there probably for another, another 15 minutes or so. If you've ever tried letting your turkey or your chicken um, rest for several days before uh, roasting it, several days uncovered in the fridge before roasting it, what you'll find is that if the skin is dry, it will never get soft. It kind of just dries out and turns into leather as opposed to becoming crispy and crackly. So you need some amount of moisture retained in there. So that's why it's important to let it rest to dry a little bit, but not so much to the point that the skin completely dries out um, because then you'll never be able to render it. So even even with a three hour rest like this, it's going to come out plenty uh, crispy. It might've come out a little bit crispier if I let it go for eight hours, but um, my oven's got convection, so that helps because um, that draws away excess moisture. And yeah, all right, so the chicken wings are gonna go in for another 15 minutes. And so I will see you in just 15 minutes. And here we are now. Now, all right, so you can hear how crackly and crispy they are. In fact, let's, I don't know if I, if I can get this close enough to the microphone that you can hear it. Hold on a second, here we go. Can you hear that crispiness? Yeah? Well, that is a crispy chicken wing. Is it as crispy as, as if you were to deep fry them for, for 12 minutes? Probably not quite as crispy, but given that, given how easy it is and the fact that with this method you don't have to um, heat up a deep fryer, don't have oil to uh, strain or discard, etc. cetera, um, I often think it's worth, worth the trade-off. And I know, especially for a lot of, you know, home cooks out there who, um, are a little afraid of deep frying or don't like the smell that it makes or the mess that it makes, uh, this method has, 
has consistently been one of my most popular recipes. Oops. So I'm losing a little bit of chicken skin there because I'm being a little impatient with the way I'm filling these up. If you get, if you use like a little thin spatula and kind of pry them up off the, uh, the grate, you won't lose skin like I did just there. Mm. Okay. Chicken there. Sauce here. Sauce on the chicken. The idea with buffalo wings is they need to be extra crispy to start with because you're adding a sauce that, you know, it's mostly, f it's, it's about, you know, half fat, half water. Hot, you know, hot sauce is mostly water and butter is mostly fat. Um, and fat will not cause um, crispy skins to soften. So like something in that, like Nashville hot chicken where you're coating in a, a pure fat, a chili oil, fried chicken and chili oil, that's not gonna soften the skin at all. In fact, you could take a French fry, crispy French fry or p crispy piece of fried chicken, dunk it in a vat of oil, leave it overnight and it won't, uh, it won't get soggy. But water is what is gonna make a crispy skin soggy. Um, and in this case, you need that chicken to be extra crispy to start so that by the time um, you're done adding the sauce, it still stays crispy even with the sauce on it. Whew. This is hot. Whew. Personally, I am a flats guy as opposed to, you know, wing, chicken wings consist of, a chicken wing consists of a, of a drumette, which is white meat, you know, it's part of the breast, and a flat, which is dark meat and more connective tissue. I am personally a flats guy, and I find they are much juicier than the drumettes are. All right, I'm gonna go over, eat one of those, and call my wife because she loves chicken wings. <laughs> when I was developing this recipe, um, I don't remember when, but it was when we were living in a one bedroom windowless apartment in Brooklyn, um, and my wife was out of town for a couple weeks, and that was the week that I that was the week that I developed this recipe. So I was cooking, you know, dozens of batches of chicken wings at home, um, and she was so mad when she got back because she loves chicken wings. All right, so we give it a shot. Mmm. Chicken wings are not the the healthiest thing in the world, but man, are they good. Here, Shabba, let me pull off a little, little chunk for you. Sit. Good girl. All right, here we are. Extra crispy oven fried chicken wings using the uh, baking powder method. Um, yeah, there you go, guys, gals, non-binary pals. Uh, check the description below for the recipe. Subscribe, like, do whatever you want, and I will see you next time. Bye.